testing this real quick. In the future, we can start talking. Uh, it's been almost two weeks since we made a video, so just figured I'd do a little stream with Poodle. Well, hi, Poodle. Well, hi. Well, you should, you should probably announce to all my fans that you're going to do a stream instead of just turning it on. I know. Yeah, it's definitely not the way to do it. <laughs> oh, Poodle. Uh, to those who are just joining, hello. Um, yeah, I was just kind of, uh, I was kind of just messing with my, my settings for live streams. And I was like, oh, I should just do a live stream right now. Uh, I have time right now, so. Hold <laughs> uh, So, yeah, just uh, just chatting and uh, doing some Q&A. Uh, I will start any Q&A with, how did Polly get a bald spot? <laughs> this is our most commonly asked question. I probably get like 10 comments a day on that. How did Polly get her bald spot? Uh... When she, uh, when she first came into the shelter, uh, it was a shelter in Wisconsin, and my wife was pretty new there. Uh, one of the vet, I think vet assistants, that thing. So one of the vet assistants uh, put one of these heating pads that they use, or they used to use, put it into the whatever, the thing that warms it up. And they warmed it up too much. So when Polly was, she was getting her surgery to have her puppy removed. Um, she, they put it on her. And now, and that means, oh, it's looking really bad right now too. Oh, Polly dog. Oh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to deal with that later. <laughs> so she has a scar there for the rest of her life, unfortunately. Um, apparently this issue is a it's something that actually happens uh my wife talked to a different vet that she knows actually last year and the vet was actually writing a paper on the like the burn phenomenon and you know they're trying to like you know <laughs> spread awareness over that oh power Tanya, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am, I am finally, finally not sick. <laughs> I'm still like a little, uh, you know, my lungs, <sighs> but I'm getting there. El Poda, Hashina. Porter wants to give him the mic with the little cheese on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one that Polly situation, just weird, uh, very unfortunate. The whole, the way, the way Polly came in, was just, uh, it's just sad. How old are Porter and Polly? A good, good Q and A question. Uh, let's start with Polly Dog. Polly Dog, how old are you, Polly Dog? <laughs> Polly is seven years old. Polly is seven. We know that for sure. Because Polly was bought from, a, uh, originally, with her original owners, was bought from a backyard breeder. She's so confused right now. I'm just, like, swinging the camera around. So they actually know how, we actually know how old she is. Uh, Porter, on the other hand. <laughs> uh, well, 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 I'm going to live forever. So it doesn't really matter how old I am. Uh, <laughs> oh, Porter. He, I don't know, I would say minimum, he's eight. Might be eight, might be a little bit older than eight. Years. <laughs> powder. You want some cheese, powder? <laughs> I don't have cheese, but I have some, uh, I have some treats. Didn't know you were sick, hope you're getting well. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, I was sick for like a week, and then my daughter brought us home a gift from <laughs> school. 
another one, another gift. A gift of viruses. And I was sick again for like another week. There you go, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, that's why that's why I haven't been posting a lot. Um, also, uh, I'm sure most of you are, or a lot of you who regularly follow the channel are aware. Uh, our blind cat Svetlana passed away about a little over two months ago. And, uh, you know, ever since she, she was diagnosed with cancer, I've, you know, I've definitely posted a lot less on YouTube. Um, uh, and you know, that's because I'm just still trying to cope with that whole situation, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to do my best here. <laughs> oh, Poto. Well, the dancing chicken. <laughs> white, ba white balance is going, going more crazy than Porter is. Oh, dancing chicken. <laughs> Porter sure can't eat a lot for a small dog. He, you know, he actually doesn't eat a lot. Uh, in fact, he's kind of, it, it used to concern me. He would skip meals. So the way we currently feed them is that, uh, oh, I, we feed them once daily. And then of course they get treats, but he, he will skip, he will not eat for a whole day sometimes. And that used to really concern me. These days, I know it's just how he is. Uh, also, he's doing that a lot less these days. I'm getting shoulder stalked right now by a severing cat. <laughs> a severing cat, can we not? Uh, it's hard to say goodbye, yeah. And the thing about Svetlana is, you know, she was my little girl. Well, Polly Dog, should I give you some treats? Polly, can you sit? I have to remember to make Polly do tricks. At least some kind of tricks. <laughs> Svetlana was my little girl. Uh, you know, Svetlana and Porter, they, you know, they're the ones that I have bonded to the most out of our current, you know, current animals. And so, very similar, right? Uh, if Porter were to pass away, it would be a similar situation where I would be as devastated as I have been. Zevran Cat is still shoulder stalking me. <laughs> yes, Zevran's. Zevran, <laughs> Zevran sounds like he smokes. Uh, we joke about that all the time. In fact, if he's like off somewhere, like far away, we'll, we'll ask my daughter. I'll say, who makes this cat, or who, uh, who makes this meow? Wow, wow. <laughs> and she'll say, Zevran! <laughs> oh, Zevran cat. Uh, is Kinder okay? Yes, Kinder is great. For, uh, I, I did a community post about it, but you know, the way YouTube works, I never, I never expect everyone to get everything. Uh, for those of you who are which is probably everyone <laughs> who don't know YouTube, the way YouTube works this, these days and all social media really is that even if you're subscribed to a channel, that does not mean YouTube will actually show you videos from that channel. So again, I, I don't expect everybody to know, but Kinder did get adopted and we've gotten a few updates uh, from his adopter and he's doing well. He's, uh, I mean, what a lucky situation that he got. A uh, person that we knew already who has adopted from us before, has adopted seniors, and has a senior Shih Tzu who's the same age <laughs> as Kinder. It, just, it, was, it was just perfect. Uh, I wish every situation was like that. <laughs> uh, Chihuahua Dog like, hey... How you doing? <laughs> thank you, Sharon, for the $20. I really appreciate that. She said, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, it's always a weird, it's weird for me as a, just a human being to 
post all of our rescue content and, you know, kind of show that side of my life because I always, I don't know, it's just something that's always been private for me, right, for the last 20 years. But it's something that I'm glad we can do. And I think uh, we have inspired a lot of people to foster. <laughs> I, if I could achieve something, it would be to get people to foster. <laughs> I have two accounts. Sometimes I can see something on one almost instantly. On others, I have to wait days. Yeah, man. Oh. I could go on a, an hour-long tangent about the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> the alg you know, algorithms on social media in general. It's, uh, it's, it's very frustrating to, to try to deal with, especially for someone like me who's just a major nerd. And I have to understand everything. The YouTube algorithm cannot be understood. <laughs> Has caught any, <laughs> Polly caught any squirrels yet today or yesterday? Oh, we're we're currently in a no squirrel streak, so we're just lucky. We're lucky Polly's as happy as she is. <laughs> uh, Lady Mist, I went insane last year and said yes to a friend who asked me to take in a rescued Great Pyrenees. Now he's a one hundred and fifty pound <laughs> polar bear sized dog. <laughs> Oh, man. The plus side is, as long as he's friendly, that's probably awesome. I mean, I I like really small dogs, but I also like really huge dogs. I, I love to hug a huge dog, like a Great Dane. <laughs> there's just something, there's something special about it. <laughs> uh, they fear Polly Dog, yeah, oh, the squirrels, man, you know... Let's just take a look right here. Let's survey our, our surroundings. We, uh, this is where we'll sit and we'll just look around. And yeah, unfortunately, it's the, it's the very cold part of the winter. Paul, thank you for the $10, Lady Mist. For Porter and Polly, love them both. Polly, can you sit? Polly can shit. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> if uh, if I, I miss someone's, if you I miss your comment, I apologize. I just didn't see it. Just, you know, uh, things are scrolling by me. Also, you know, remember, I have one hand and I have one, one brain. It's not the fastest brain. <laughs> uh, and I have Mr. Shoulders. All right, should I just let you up for, just for fun? There we go. Okay. Right. I have a shoulder cat now. <laughs> oh, oh, it's everyone cat. Thank you, Tracy. And <laughs> I like that you included the fish. Oh, for the for those who don't know, our new family members, we have some fish. Brindley, uh, Brindley had some fish, and then I've basically, while I was sick, I've been binge watching, uh, things about fish, like, freshwater fish keeping Zavron cat, and now I have a tank as well. Ooh, okay, Zavron got hair all over me. So yeah, that's been kind of my thing the last two weeks. I do plan, <laughs> Mighty, uh, Mighty Mina, I do plan on drawing your babies. They're just super cute, such great personalities. That would be awesome. We love, I love when people draw pictures of them. If you do draw uh, a picture of them, send it to me and I will community post it. People love those. Ah, uh, Zavrin! Okay, Zavrin Cat. I put him back on his tree, and now he jumped right back up. All right, Zevin Cat. Come on, buddy. Charlie. You what? Welcome, Charlie. Doesn't get a stream. I'm sorry, Charlie. 
<laughs> Zebra is so obnoxious. Um, for those who don't know, Charlie Cap, Zavron Cap. Who else do we have? Oh, we have Kanga and Uncle Frankles. <laughs> You'll have to set up a tripod just to pat them for ages. You know, I learned very early on, tripods in this madness, this crazy house that I live in, they don't work. <laughs> they, uh, <clears throat> they, they get knocked down. I actually had um, the phone I used when I first started YouTube. Uh, the, the camera on it got broken because it was sitting on a tripod. <coughs> oh, sorry. Because it was sitting on a tripod. Uh, Polly actually knocked it over and, you know, fell down, whacked the lens. And, yeah, had to buy a new phone. There is a person named Polly Dog in chat, apparently. <laughs> uh, Anne Catherine. Hello, Andy. I'm curious about how Izzy is nowadays. Oh, man. That's a story. Well, uh, I'm curious about how she is, too. Frankly. Um, we haven't heard from her. We haven't heard from her owner. So, not really sure what's going on with that situation. Uh, I, you know, messaged her a few times over the months and didn't hear anything from her. Then I switched to this phone. And when I switched to this phone, I lost my contacts. I forgot to back them up. So, yeah, it would be up to her really at this point to make contact with us. But we haven't heard from her. Uh, if I can be, I don't know what, a bit cynical, uh, I think that maybe she just wanted to talk to us because she wanted free vet care and such, but, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be throwing too much shade around as the, as the kids say. Should I get some more treats? Oh, should I let May in the house? Oh, I completely forgot. May was outside. <laughs> May Bear Come on in, May So yeah, Izzy, Sappy uh, I, wish, I wish we could hear something about her She, you know, that last we knew She was doing well And I, I'm sure she's probably doing fine uh, If we hear from Her owner <laughs> When things go wrong again, I would not be surprised. <clears throat> oh, Paul. Awesome oh, some cheese. May, enough. What's Polly Dog's favorite snack? <laughs> Polly Dog. Uh, what is your favorite snack? Polly doesn't know. Polly's favorite snack is squirrels. <laughs> How do you decide your dogs and cats names? Oh, that varies a lot. I actually did not name either of these two. Uh, my name for Porter was Potato when we first... <laughs> I mean, Porter was not my dog. Neither of these two were mine when we adopted them. They were my wife's. Can I get an woo woo woo? woo So she named them. Uh, I called Porter Potato for a while. <laughs> well, because he's, he's kind of is a potato. There you go, buddy. Let's see if we can get... Hold on. I was doing this earlier. May. I love you, May. Can you say I love... I love... Okay, yeah. Hold on. Camera. I love you. Can you say I love you? <laughs> can you say I love you? May. Focus. <laughs> Good girl. I, I swear. I swear. Maybe I'm crazy. I 
Nah, I'm getting wow. her to say, I ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, then it sounds similar to I love you. <laughs> as Meg <laughs> as Meg gets bigger the two hours shrink that's true I think May is fully grown now by the way I think <laughs> she's a toasted marshmallow uh, when she was a puppy uh, someone <laughs> someone uh, a commenter said she looked like a, <laughs> a pile of mashed potatoes <laughs> <laughs> and we we ran with that. We were calling her that for the longest time. Can I get an owl? <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question though. How do I do I pick my names? Honestly, it varies a ton. Uh, in May's case, so in Porter and Polly again, I didn't name them. Uh, I would. Hi, Doug. Hey, May. May. No, you know better than that. You better sit. You don't take their food. Well-behaved, well-trained puppy right there. <laughs> uh, in May's case, actually, no, let's, let's say Charlie first. Charlie, when he was a kitten, he would always bite my finger. And if you if you have seen the video, the... Charlie bit my finger, the, the kid video. Um, I would say, whenever he'd bite my finger, I would say, Charlie, don't bite my finger, Charlie. <laughs> and it just somehow, he became Charlie. And well, I'm, I'm trying to hand him a treat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's how he got his name. May got her name, oh, kind of for a few reasons. Uh, oh, oh. Number one, my grandfather really loved Mae West, the actress. Uh, beautiful lady. <laughs> so there was that. Um, there was also... There was a puppy who had Parvo. The puppy was uh, like a white husky mix. And this was like three years ago. The, the We were fostering it, and it was in really bad shape. It came to us, you know near death, and it did end up dying <sighs> like a day after it came to us. And I said, you know, when, when it died, I said, one day, if one day we're going to adopt a white or whatever, white-ish puppy, and I'm going to name it May. Because I, oh, sorry, that puppy's name was May. So, that's how May got her name. Sorry, if, I, if that was an unclear story. <laughs> Good girl submissive pose. She knows. Um, it, that, by the way, is mostly trained this way. Me, down. So, she, so you'll notice that when I, when I yelled at her, that, that finger came out. So it was down. <laughs> she knows. Um, let's see. Lady Mist, thank you for the five dollars. Oh my god, May, <laughs> May can talk. Oh yeah, she's chat. She's very chatty. Porter, the opposite of Porter. Porter basically never barks. Well, uh, he dances though. Uh, did I miss something here? I love Porter's will. <laughs> Porter's well. I, I wish I remember. I wish I remembered where that actually came from. Uh, it was just, it's funny that the whole well thing, because a year into him saying will, well, I started saying it myself. <laughs> Like, his his speech patterns will sometimes bleed into my own. Can I get Porter to howl? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> I can quite easily get Porter to howl, in fact. Uh, <laughs> the question is, should I get Porter to howl? 
I wish I could. I think I think it's a thing. You can like do a poll. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that option would be though. Should I get Porter to hell? <laughs> there are there are. I, I only say that because there are a ton of people who hate hearing them howl. So I don't want to like you know just pop that one in the, in here. I think I'm going to do it anyway. By the way, just a second. Oh. Do they sleep together or separate? Um, uh, Severn Cat just jumped on me again. Every, uh, P- Porter sleeps in bed with me. Uh, basically taped to my back at all times. <laughs> Polly sleeps with her mama. Polly is mom's dog, by the way. I, uh, I don't know. I, I should always just say that every time I talk about Polly. Polly is mom's dog. Polly loves me. I love Polly. But she is still mom's dog. In the same way Porter is my dog. Okay, Severn Cat. Thank you. So yeah, Polly sleeps with mom. And May. <laughs> May sleeps uh, in, on a bed and on the floor. Because Polly Dog oh. said she's not allowed to sleep in the bed. <laughs> okay. We want to... Uh, Alright, we're going to... We're going to howl... I'm going to give you guys a howl warning to anyone who does not want to hear howl. I, ex- I expect that viewer counter thing to, to go down, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway. All right, let's do it. Oh. 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 Down. You better lay down. Okay, May is ruining this. Sorry. (laughs) May. May. Enough. Well, why May? Why is she gonna mess with my howling? Uh, it's very easy to get him to howl. If I walked, if I walked out of the door right now, he would also howl. <laughs> and if he's here and I come home, uh, you know, he, when, once he hears the car, I immediately hear him howling. <laughs> Porter's always the instigator. <laughs> um... Do, bo- do they both get along with every dog? No. Um, Porter pretty much gets along with everyone as long as they respect him. He, you know, as long as, long as they, they bow to Porter, you know, as, and the Porter is their superior. He'll, he's very nice. Polly's weird. Uh... Man, there are only a few dogs that Polly has actually liked uh, of all the fosters we've ever had. She's she's a very 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 different personality from Porter. She, uh, I honestly, if my wife, you know, abandoned me and my <laughs> and my daughter tomorrow and all the other animals, I and just took Polly with her, I would say Polly would be happier than with. All of us. That's just kind of Polly's personality. That's not to say Polly's unhappy, but <laughs> she just, you know, I don't think she really likes a lot of activity. I'm sure most of you know what that's like, right? You have that dog who you're like, yeah, this is going to be a solo dog because they really, eh, they're not a big fan of other dogs. Polly has a dissatisfied face all the time. Yes, the, <laughs> in fact... The running joke is, uh, you guys never hear this. Polly has a catchphrase. <laughs> and her catchphrase is, Polly doesn't like that. Or, 
you know, Polly doesn't like this. Polly doesn't, you know, <laughs> because she doesn't like a lot of things. Forty dogs. Okay, Pod. She's just, you know, she's a, she's a very strong-willed dog, and she's also very dominant. You, Whoa. one thing I never have gotten a video of is. She she dominance humps the cats sometimes. Like she'll come up to them and kind of bully them a bit, <laughs> and try to dominance hump them. Uh, she will do that with other other dogs too. Sometimes she's just she's a strong willed little little girl. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are around when we had Dean, Dean was he was you know. Just, uh, yeah, with, with other dogs, he was a little, like, whatever, standoffish. But Polly, Polly would, you know, if Dean was, like, in her spot, Polly would come over, you know, <laughs> and, like, start trouble with him. Like, oh, this is Polly Dog's spot. <laughs> I love Polly. <laughs> oh, we love Polly. She's her own person. She definitely is. She's a character. <laughs> She's also, you know how I love to do my, like, when I pet them, and then I stop petting them, so that they'll ask for more pets? Uh, Polly is so stubborn about that, that she won't nose me or anything, she'll just look at me like, uh, excuse me? Why did you stop petting me? Forty do do that? <laughs> Dreamweaver, thank you for the ten dollars. Dreamweaver, is that a new a new account? For some reason, I don't remember the... Oh, you know what? It's probably the... Because you have to choose your name now. Polly versus Charlie. Who wins? <laughs> Polly... <laughs> Polly would easily win. Charlie is not a fighter. Well, I might. Charlie can get in a good scrap. I know, Charlie. Why are you going to mess with me when I'm sleeping? No, Charlie's, he's a, uh, he's a special kitty. He's very weak. <laughs> oh, poor, oh, Charles. We have twerkers in our house. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love Polly. Polly, you know, um, Polly shines. If you can get her out, and I, I did this, and I had ticks on my body to prove it. Uh, I took Polly out into the woods, the real, the Canadian wilderness in whatever, what it was, June. And she was alive. I have never seen, it was so, it was night and day. Her sitting in the car, she gets out of the car and she just, she came alive. And she's looking everywhere, she's like, oh, dad, what are we hunting? <laughs> This is a dog who's never been trained to hunt or anything like that. So, yeah, just, it's in her, it's in her bones. <laughs> it's every cat. Oh, you're so exhausting. I'm like, you know, guys can't see it, but I'm over here dodging, dodging the shoulder cat. He's shoulder stalking me too much. <clears throat> I'm sure I've seen Charlie scrap with Porter a few times. Yeah, Charlie's thing is that he he does his uh well let's just call it what it is, his horny scruffing. He something's wrong with Charlie's brain. Probably from all the seizures since he was a kitten. Uh he was of course uh neutered at, as a kitten and all that all that stuff. But he's weird and he, he comes up to the other animals and he scruffs them. In like a <laughs> a sexual scruff. We're all adults here. We can talk about that. That is, in fact, why I love this channel. Uh, I would actually bet that basically none of you are below the age of, I don't know, 35. That's why I love you. <laughs> El Paolo. We have a We have a very adult, mature audience, thankfully. I saw this post of a dude who owned a hunting chihuahua. 
I wouldn't, you know, if you get a, a dog like Polly, who is more of, I would, I think Paul, of Polly as a Jack Russell. In fact, she has Jack Russell colors. But she has more of a Jack Russell personality than a Chihuahua personality, in my opinion. Although, to be fair, I am no small dog expert. <laughs> I would consider myself a large dog expert, to some degree, but not a small dog. Me. <laughs> Dreamweaver, I'm probably old enough to be your mom. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you know, I'm pretty old now. I'm four, or I'm a, I almost said 14. I'm 40. Just turned 40. Uh, two, well, yeah, a couple months ago. Mighty Mina, I'm actually 17. Wow. Mina, that's, yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, I have nothing against younger people or anything. <laughs> it's just that, in my experience, especially uh, male Gen Z, I, I, I don't know. I, I rarely, rarely get along, get along with male Gen Z. Uh, female Gen Z, I have a cousin... She that I adore, and uh, she's like fifteen now, and yeah, <laughs> that's really my only direct contact with Gen Z. Oh, the cats are fighting. <laughs> One of my fixed girls goes after the male kittens. I think it's a dominance thing. Yeah, and it probably in your case it probably is. In Charlie's case, Charlie, one of Charlie's nicknames is Scrambles. He's, uh, his brain. It's a little scrambled. Do you think Polly could hunt down a rat on her own? Polly is, man, uh, especially before I started YouTube, we had some absolutely epic chases. Uh, Polly is has like tracked and I guess you could say caught she's never caught anything like she's never grabbed it you know actually bit something but she has tracked and uh, cornered a ton of things <laughs> including by the way a porcupine which don't even get me started on that uh we did not realize it was a porcupine and she yeah we got close but thankfully we were able to back off in time <laughs> uh we oh another really good one was a um a groundhog we had a groundhog living in the, our old backyard and polly cornered it and she was just barking at it she was like popa come on popa and i was like what what's going on and porter being being porter he you know he he hunts with her but he i don't think he understands it like she does uh he tried to fight <laughs> he tried to fight the groundhog, um, and his poor little chest, he get, it scratched him, and he had all horrible scratches all over his poor little chicken chest. Um, yeah, and, you know, she's, she's like cornered squirrels. Oh, yeah, Gavin skunks. Oh, don't get me started on the skunks. <laughs> oh, well, come on, wait me, you'll be petting Polly. Come on, Dave, what? No, nope, whoa, poor dog's was trying to pet Polly. Well, what, are you supposed to pet me? I'm your favorite dog ever. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> well, I got to pet Polly, bro. Well, well, well. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with here? You see what I have to deal with? Could you resist that? Could you resist that little nose? Um... Hunting, uh, yeah, hunt, chihuahua dog life. Hunting rodents is the chihuahua wheelhouse. They love it. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Um, Porter doesn't care, but Porter's a, he's a, he's a fighter. You know, he's a male. He would, he would like to go and go to have gladiatorial arena matches against other dogs. Whereas Polly wants to hunt. Mighty Mina, <laughs> uh, oh, I see, oh, I, I, I missed a bunch of uh, generationals talk in here. 
I'm Gen X and I love my Gen Z kids. Ooh, let me, can I scroll? Yes, a little bit. And I love my Gen Z kids, at least the ones I know are a lot like us, snarky old souls with no hex given. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I when I make fun of a, a group of people, I, of course, it's just a joke. But I certainly, I even as a child, I always uh, preferred uh, older people. I remember being on a train in St. Louis. I went and I sat with some old man and just talked to the guy. <laughs> My grandmother was like, she was just so, she loved that. And she was like, because she knew it was her because of her. Because I was a grandma's boy. And I just, yeah, because of that, I, I think that's probably why I always like older people. Yeah, Porter was licking Polly's wound. He was. I, I only noticed that when we got on camera. She's it's actually looking really bad right now. <clears throat> my Oh. Oh, by the way, Maybear is Polly's little squirrel spotter. She actually will tell us if there's a squirrel out there. She doesn't really know how to hunt yet, but Uh, how Porter and Polly get along with strangers? Could I pet them in real life? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, you were not the first person to ask that. Quite a few people. Quite a few people asked that. This guy, you could take him home. I mean, seriously. <laughs> uh, in public, he will walk right. Well, you know, we'll walk into a park, let's say, and there will be people sitting on you know a picnic table. He will run up to them, jump up on the table, and sit in their lap. He is a baby. He wasn't always like that. He used to be fearful of people, of course. But I noticed about, you know, a year and a half ago, he started to do that. <laughs> Mostly with older people and younger girls, like, you know, you know 10-ish year old girls in a group especially. Which I think that's just because the girls are the girls and older people are more likely to want to come up and pay attention to him. <laughs> Polly, on the other hand, uh, Polly would not bite you, but kind of this kind of goes along with the rest of Polly's theme. She she's very it takes her a lot of time. Uh, if she meets you, she will she would stand behind me. And she would just, she wouldn't hide but or do anything aggressive, but she wouldn't want attention, really. But the second, if she met you for the second time, you'd notice her warming up. And at the third time, she would probably actually bark at you and actually run to you. She's just, just, just how she is. Oh, portal. <laughs> so yeah, that if that answers your question appropriately, <laughs> and of course, Maybear would le she would jump on you and love you like crazy. Maybear's she's a big baby, she's such a big baby. You should see her. Oh, I really need to get a video of that someday when she meets strange uh, small dogs. She will submit to them right away. <laughs> she's like, oh no. It's the, it's the small dogs. <laughs> oh, whoa. Porter and Polly have taught her well. Um, there are cool, <laughs> cool younger people for sure, and they help me with my cell phone issues too. <laughs> that is always a good thing. I love my my cousin. Um, I I adore her. She's, and yeah, it's you know they grew up in a. In a whole different world than we did. <laughs> Good considering his past, yeah. Uh, Porter has come a long way. I'm very, I am very proud of him. Uh, just him as an individual, and I'm also very proud of myself for being able to do what I did with him. Uh, we were just funny enough talking about him yesterday. 
<clears throat> and uh, we were talking about, you know, the topic of euthanization of aggressive dogs. And Porter, if Porter was a big dog, he would have been euthanized. And that's, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. But he got lucky enough to be a chihuahua, and he got lucky enough to, and I got lucky enough to <laughs> meet him when we did. We literally moved away from that, that city like two months later, so. Oh, yeah. But he was so aggressive that, I mean, we're talking, he would um, latch to my wrist. And, you know, in that first week especially, latched my wrist, biting me, trying trying to attack me. Uh, just because, you know, he would get triggered. It wasn't like a guard dog behavior. But he would get triggered, right? Like, I would do something. Like, I would be like, oh, you know, like, make a sudden movement unintentionally, right? And he would interpret that as I was going to hit him. And he would defend himself, right? Just the fight or flight instinct kind of thing. Uh, and on that topic, by the way, is, you know, his abuse and his recovery over the years. There's only, at this point, like, I can, I can do this. He's totally fine, you know, I can wave my hands around him. But one thing I still cannot do is if I'm throwing, I can't throw things around him. He, it still freaks him out. So when I play throw the ball with May, I have to kind of like, I, if Porter's sitting next to me, I'll just put the blanket over him and just so he can't see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should, uh, I've, I've meant to make a video about that, about some of Porter's like PTSD quirks. Okay, let's see. Let me try to catch up on some comments here. Uh, I missed a bunch of things. <laughs> it's beautiful to see Porter and Polly there. They are so attached to you. <laughs> the love between the three of you is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I've learned a lot from this channel. My Liam was very, very aggressive and would have been put down if he was a big guy. Yeah. Uh, It's, you know, I guess it's a, it's the plus side, right, of being a chihuahua. If, <clears throat> if it's a chihuahua, unless it's like one of those weird big chihuahuas, <laughs> uh, there's always hope. No matter how bad they are, or no matter how aggressive and or messed up that they are, they, you can rehabilitate them because they can't kill you. <laughs> and they can't maim you or anything, right? So they are, they are lucky in that regard. Um, Mighty Mina, yeah, um, he was abused, poor baby, he, uh, he, uh, if you're not, if you haven't seen that, any of that kind of stuff that, you know, we do have, uh, I have videos about that on the channel, about, like, his story, um, I have one video of his, what one of his PTSD episodes looks like, so, um, yeah, so if you're interested in that, uh, that's something I, I try to try to spread the word on that stuff because there are a lot of people who just straight up don't even believe that dogs can have PTSD and, and yeah, um, it's ridiculous. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> something I'm very passionate about. Uh, thank you, Tracy. How did your move go? I remember you were preparing to move. Yeah, we moved. Uh, where we? This is our... Well, when was that? I forget. September? September. We moved to this house. Uh, the old house, we had horrible neighbors. And we didn't have windows. We Or, like, we didn't have windows looking outside, which made me really unhappy, especially in these long winters. Yeah, I know. I this, by the way, <laughs> I just so you know, just to give you guys a pers some per perspective here, um, doing a live stream like this, especially when I'm talking, I don't. I a lot, a lot of times I don't see what's happening like right in front of me. I'm just kind of trying to show. 
But this is really adorable. I didn't actually even notice that he was... <laughs> He's licking her bald spot. Because it's it's really red. It looks like she had a scab and the scab must have broken. Holy. She's lucky. She's lucky to have him. Because <laughs> she doesn't do that for him. He's just a big sweetheart. Dreamweaver, that's the only video I haven't watched. Yeah. No, I, I get that for sure. The, uh, it was honestly when I started YouTube, uh, you know, it was like at least 40 videos until I even felt comfortable talking about Porter's abuse. Uh, but once we really started doing YouTube, I figured it's his story, you know, and I, at the end of the day, in a way, what this is, is it's a story. <laughs> it's a weirdly told story. It's a story of their lives. It took me, I, I didn't post uh, his PTSD episodes, just, yeah, I posted one. Uh, it took me, I think, over a year to finally post it, because it just, I never felt comfortable doing it. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, there are a lot of uh, people on the inter internet in general who post a lot of, you know, you have like people who post fake rescue content. Or they post videos of, you know, a disabled animal or something like that. And it's very, like, I don't know. It's, it's like, predatory. It's, it, it's, it's posted by people who don't care about the animals. So when I, ha when I post a video, like Porter's PTSD incident or Charlie, uh, I posted his, one of his seizures. I always feel very uncomfortable doing it because I don't, I don't like those people and I don't want to like feel like I'm posting that stuff for views or money or anything like that. And it, yeah, but, and then that is why I've only posted one PSTSD video and one seizure video in Charlie's case. <clears throat> And then, yeah, on that topic of, like, fake rescue content, then you have people who, like, um, what is it called? Virtue signaling. The people who want you to think that they're a good person. And as someone who, you know, what my wife and I do, <laughs> if I can, it, it's hard for me to say this because I'm a, I'm a self, self-loathing human being. <laughs> but if I can say, uh, you know, we, we try, we try to like, we try to be good people. And, uh, yeah, so it sucks whenever you see people who do kind of exploit situations like that. <laughs> These two right now are just love, pure love. Very good points on virtue signet and, and fake rescues. Thank you. I man, uh, I think about that stuff all the time. <clears throat> Being like posting videos on on the internet is not it's not something that is natural for my personality. <laughs> so and honestly, whenever I watch a lot of those kinds of videos where it's just like, you know, there's a blind cat video, funny enough, or a blind cat channel, not on YouTube, but it's on like Instagram and such, where I really, really sincerely think that these people are just like, hey, here's my blind cat. Oh, look at how sad my blind cat is all the time. And as someone who had a blind cat until recently, uh, I was just like, man, I, oh, I don't want to be these people, you know? I'm not putting this stuff out there to get attention or fame or money. Um, I don't like fame at all. <laughs> I like money, but... <laughs> yeah, um, and that's why, you know, I, I do my best to... Just, I'm telling the story, you know? And that's why the majority of the content is just, like, silly. <laughs> Uh, I miss someone. 
Uh, the seizure video was the first video I saw of yours, and I've been hooked on your channels ever since. Well, I, hey, I'm glad you're here, I'm here with us. <laughs> I, you, know, you guys have no idea. Uh, I'm very thankful to have, if it wasn't for the fact that I, I feel like there are a lot of genuine animal lovers that follow us, I, I just doubt I would be doing YouTube if it wasn't for you guys. El Poro. Oh, was Evan Cap. <laughs> My mouth is really dry right now. We miss Fetlana very much. <laughs> Predator. <laughs> Predator, <clears throat> for those, uh, Predator, the commenter in chat. I have, like, it's funny. He's just, you know, he's just a person. He's a commenter. Uh, he, you know, he's been commenting since, um, on Blind Cat's Fetlana's channel, uh, since, what was it, like, June or May or something like that, and he's just, he's just a person, he would, you know, sometimes comment, but I could always just tell, he just loved Svetlana, <laughs> so he's just, you know, one of, one of these commenters that, for some reason, I just feel a bond to him, um, there are quite a few, uh, a few of them are in here, like Dreamweaver and Deborah and Tracy, stuff like that, you know. But yeah, it's just funny. Funny how that goes, huh? Uh, let's see. Scott, hello to Andy Poda, two of my favorites, Missing Sweetness, aka Meow Scow Shoulder Cat. Polydog says, <laughs> Yeah, me neither. I do not like having fame because it can really change a person if not careful. Yeah. I, 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 I don't mind like having a, like a, you know, people know me, right? I don't mind people knowing who I am, but I have no interest in like being very famous. And you can tell if you watch, while well, you watch our videos, I don't make the kind of content that would ever make me famous or make us famous, I should say. I make very, like, you know, it's just me working on this. I'm not, like, oh, I'm not doing crazy editing. I'm not trying to appeal to younger audiences, stuff like that, which you pretty much have to do. If you want to, like, make it on YouTube, you need to appeal to younger audiences. Um, but I like our, I like our audience. <laughs> Uh, Hella says, we can absolutely feel, see the difference between this channel and those kinds of channels. It's a world of difference. Thank you. Uh, and I, I always hope that that shines through. I mean, just the fact that our house, actually, it's pretty clean right now, but our house isn't sterilized and perfect looking. You know that you're actually in a, <laughs> in a place where a real family lives. Uh, let's see. What's going on with Kinder? Kinder got adopted, and he's doing well. As far as we know, we've gotten a, a few updates, and he's doing well. <clears throat> I'm so glad you went out of your comfort zone and started posting videos. Thank you. I, yeah, so am I. I, you should have seen me before. <laughs> you should have seen me before YouTube. Uh, when I came home from work or wherever, I'd plop my phone down on the counter, and that was the last time I'd see my phone until I was gone. Oh, Polydog. So uh, I, when my daughter was born, I didn't even have, bring my phone out. The doctor had to literally say, <laughs> oh, do you want to take a picture? I was like, oh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, you know, I was the opposite of, you know, an influencer, someone who actually thinks about making videos. Um, someone asked about Svetlana. Svetlana, uh, I guess two people responded. Svetlana passed away in December. She had cancer. <clears throat> Uh, 
Let me... Okay. Uh, let me guess that's why you don't show your face often, right? Uh... The reason I don't... I mean, you know, I've shown my face. But the reason I don't show my face often is... That's a lot of reasons, I guess. Uh, Number one... I've never really wanted this to be... uh, A show about me. I want this to be a show about them. Now, of course, it is about me. Because, obviously, I'm the human. (laughs) I'm the one talking. Um... But I've just seen a lot of channels where you see the human face maybe too much. (laughs) And, you know, uh, I just never wanted it to be about that. That We would do better if I showed my face. Because, you know, this is the way our brains work. If uh, you saw my face in videos more, the channel would do better. um, Because, again... If a human face is there, you're more likely to want to watch that video and just look at it. It's just the way it goes. Uh, And then the more attractive that human face is, (laughs) the more you want to watch it. Um, My human face, I would say, isn't, like, particularly attractive, but... (laughs) Um, The other thing, also, frankly, the reason I don't show my face is that I... uh, I don't, I don't know, I I tried to record a few videos, and when I would edit them, I would just, like, focus on my own, on myself too much, and just, like, be bothered by it. I don't know. It's, yeah, something I've never wanted to be, like I said, never wanted to be famous. And I don't, I don't have any, you know, there are a lot of people who, uh, who have dog channels, and who you ask yourself... Is this a channel about your dogs, or is this a channel about you? Because your face is <laughs> is always in the cam- in the video, <laughs> and I don't really want it to be like that. If I ever started to feel comfortable with being on on camera, uh, I would probably post those videos to the other channel that Mom and Dog Dad. Maybe I will someday. Who knows. It could happen. <laughs> thank you, um, Anita. Uh, everybody you know, with Svetlana, thank you. Um, I mentioned earlier in this stream that's Svetlana having cancer and then being, you know, and then passing away. It's why I've posted a lot less on YouTube. I I can't really explain it to you in a logical way, but. Um, her passing has made it harder for me to feel interested in YouTube. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't really know how to explain that, but that's not to say I, I'm quitting YouTube or anything. Um, I'm just, you know, still trying to get through it. Um, Polydog, Polydog said, oh, not, not exploiting my daughter. Like, family channels, yeah, oh. Uh, for those of you who don't know, who aren't aware of YouTube family channels, man, those that's real a real disturbing part of YouTube. Uh, I, what's funny is that I have been accused of exploiting Brindley uh, on her channel like twice, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? I <laughs> Brindley's channel is like the most casual thing ever. It's like just moments, the candid moments from her life. There's some crazy people out there. Um, Let's see. I'm I'm sure I missed a bunch of things. (laughs) Who would want to be famous? Yuck. I don't know. So, you know, more narcissistic types, probably. I like that... Thank you, Charlia. Charlia? Charlia, I think that's how you pronounce that. I like that you talk about your your wife and her job. I I love, I deeply respect my wife. Uh, it's, honestly, I, I really don't talk about her enough. 
but talk about a husband who deeply respects their 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 significant other um you know she's a vet but more so she's a shelter vet and you know for those of you who don't know what shelter vets are which i you know a lot of people don't it, she went to vet school first then she had to do separate training to specifically be a shelter vet shelter vets have like a completely different skill set um and most of them are they're wizards when it comes to spay and neuter <laughs> you're like your typical private uh vet you know they can maybe do like six spay or neuters in a day my wife can do 30 she is just a, f- a freaking wizard third and yes i that's actually not an exaggeration my wife can do 30 spay and neuters in a day she's very fast she's like uh, I've told her that actually. I'm like, you should make, <laughs> you, you and I should make a video um, ex- explaining how you do your spay and neuters. <laughs> because she's so, her, you know, her hands themselves are fast. She's very accurate. Not like these old chonky, clumsy hands. I could never be a vet. <laughs> I have arthritis too, so that doesn't, that doesn't help. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's, she's amazing. And I like, have so much respect for my wife. (laughs) The recital video was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. We had fun. Those poor kids. (laughs) I loved how they were all just like deer in headlights. Much respect for Miss Sandy. I would love to work in a vet clinic, but I don't think I could get the job of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you have to, first you have to go to vet school. Well, you have to get an undergraduate degree first. Then you have to go to vet school. And then it depends on what you do after that. But to be a shelter vet, like she is, um, there's like extra training. Uh, another reason I really, she just, I respect her. And I also just think what she's doing, it matters. It matters so much. <clears throat> If your if your humane society has a shelter vet, it's night and day different from a normal humane society. Uh, a you know a good shelter vet means there are way less animals in the shelter because that shelter vet comes in there. They you know they tell you, they tell the management how to do things the right way. They come in, they spay and neuter everything quickly. They also handle all of the the shelter's vet care, which means you know, most well, people don't know this. A lot if a shelter doesn't have a uh, a shelter vet, they're probably in debt, or you know they have a very expensive vet vet bill. Uh, the Humane Society we're at now, when we came in, they had a vet bill of one hundred and I think twenty thousand dollars. And yeah, they obviously, needless to say, now they have a that bill of zero. <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll uh, <laughs> I could go on. I I love my wife, and I I think she's just like a superhero. Um, I wanted to be a vet as a child, but life my life was very chaotic. Also, again, these chonky hands. Uh, Dreamweaver <clears throat> Dreamweaver said just found out last week my 17 year old rescue cat might have cancer that did not want to do much further testing due to her age I dread the day I have to put her down oh. you know the one thing that's really frustrating and very difficult is uh, especially at 17 and if there's you know if they're sick or if they you know they have cancer even taking them out to the vet is is dangerous uh, happens all the time uh, animals will die on the way to the vet 
and just the stress of being in the car or being, you know, at the shelter, stuff like that. And yeah, uh, I'm really sorry. And I just, I hope that, you know, you get to say goodbye to her, at least, you know, on your terms. And one of the things that always uh, scares me once an animal starts getting sick is that uh, you're going to lose them before, with without saying goodbye, basically. Oh, Pod. Well, come on, Dan. We we gonna get all don't get all sad now, Dan. No, oh, I know Pod. You well, you right, Pod. Well, I usually am. <laughs> I usually am. <laughs> You're a good boy, Pod. Um, let's see what else we talk. Oh, I see. I posted our Shih Tzu, who is also old and not eligible for care. Oh. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's very frustrating. Have you ever had high blood pressure? Wow. Uh, no, actually, my blood pressure, there's, blood pressure's always been, like, perfect. <clears throat> No matter what, too. Um, everybody always seems to kind of blame basically every health condition on your weight. Uh, I'm I'm a little chunky right now, for sure. But when I was younger, uh, you know, like when I had a, a six-pack at one point in my life. And, you know, my blood pressure was the same then as, as it is now. <laughs> well, you know, the reality is most um, most things like that, blood pressure and all that kind of general health stuff, in humans and animals, it's genetic. Like, it's very, a lot of it is genetic. And I think these days, because everybody's trying to sell you something, um, to, we, I think we all think that nurture is to blame more often than that is true. Uh, good example is teeth. Charlie Cat, he's, what, three years old? He's lost most of his teeth. And uh, when I have... I posted a video about him losing some of his teeth. And there are so many people, these people, every... They think every excuse in the world. Like, he lost his teeth because he eats dry food. He lost his teeth because he eats wet food. He lost his teeth because you don't brush his teeth enough. He lost his teeth because he didn't take CBD oil. <laughs> I don't know if they actually said that last one, but I'm going to assume they did. And then, meanwhile, Zevran Cat is nine years old, eats the exact same diet as Charlie Cat, and he has lost no teeth. So, guess what? Genetics. <laughs> Charlie Cat obviously has terrible genetics. I had a rat with cancer. We had to put her down, sadly. Rat... I'm sorry to hear that. I, you know, I love rats. Um, I'm not a huge rodent person, but I do. I, I have, uh, rats are a bit of, of a weakness for me. I, I like them. I really hate that they don't live very long, though. Oh, Poe. Well, you talking about rats? I'm not talking about you, Porter. Well, you better be calling me a rat. Well, I'm sorry, Poe. Well, that's right. I'm not a ram. I'm a, I'm a very handsome dog. <laughs> this is a Walmart sweater, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we, I've been making a lot of jokes. Mom bought him this sweater at Walmart. Uh, I've been making jokes. I don't want to wear that Walmart sweater. <laughs> oh, man. What somebody said somebody said something about tiny chihuahua Cedric. I completely missed it. Um Oh I see. Tiny Chihuahua Cedric is another favorite dog channel of mine. I love all the precious puppies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a huge I'm a hater, by the way. I'm a you guys have no idea. I'm a huge hater. If I'm gonna, I say hater, that's not something I say in my normal life. 
but um, I just say it in this context. Uh, I'm not a big fan of channels like Tiny Chihuahua Cedric or that other big channel, that other channel that just blew up recently. <laughs> not because of the dogs themselves, but yeah, just certain other things. Um, promoting the the main my main issue is the uh, promotion of breeding, basically. Uh, yes, Chua <laughs> Lou the Chi. Yeah, I'm. I would be surprised if anybody in this chat didn't know who Lou the Chi is, because if you basically the way YouTube works is you know once a, a channel starts getting popular. Uh, YouTube, the algorithm, so it'll take uh, stuff from other popular Chihuahua channels, and the algorithm will start showing, like, will start showing it to my audience. So, like, most of my audience probably got shown their videos. <clears throat> you don't know Lou? I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, Lou. You know, when we were just talking about. Uh, you know, we're talking about different content, right? And how I always want this channel to be very real. Uh, Lou is like, like that channel is just so different. It's the complete opposite of us. You look at their videos, everything, like their house stuff, they look, it all looks perfect. Frankly, they're, they're rich kids. <laughs> rich kids making videos. Literally, they literally know Paris Hilton's mom, <laughs> um, and have a clothing line with her. Apparently, uh, like I said, I'm a I'm gonna be a hater on that one. I don't I don't talk about this in my normal videos, but <laughs> um, the the real reason that it actually it actually does bother me, but not because of those channels in particular. Uh, the reason it does bother me is that uh, it's YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts, for those of you who don't know. Oh, Nikki Chihuahua. I will get to that one later. But um, YouTube Shorts, for those who don't know, it's basically YouTube just hijacking TikTok. You know, they want to be TikTok. Uh, and man, Shorts... <sighs> First of all, the way my style does not lend itself well to shorts. I don't cater to, like, the super young audience. I also don't make, you know, I don't make videos that are very, like, popular entertainment kind of videos. Uh, so now that YouTube shorts are being pushed so much harder, which, by the way, uh, only it was only a few months ago they started to really, really go hard on YouTube Shorts. Uh, the YouTube, like the algorithm, started favoring Shorts a lot more. Uh, we're all all of the dog channels, the ones who don't focus on Shorts, um, we're all seeing decline, like pretty steep declines. Whereas the ones who do focus on Shorts are all doing extremely well. And yeah, that's a whole subject I could I could really go really go for a long time on because it's 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 killing it's killing small dog creators like me. Uh, my channel is this channel has been like in somewhat of a decline. That's not really necessarily related. It's more because of I haven't been posting and stuff like that. But I'm talking about channels in general animal channels and not just dogs but cats and like even fish like aquarium channels i've noticed uh yeah so here uh let me see <laughs> sorry i'm getting on a I'm getting on a ramp a rant here Yeah, Lou has lots of merch. Yep, because, like I said, they work with the Hiltons, literally the Hiltons. Um, what a difference. Like, that channel is so different from us. Uh, 
not only the owner of the channel is way different from me, but just everything is so different. They literally, on their website, they tell you what breeder they bought their dog from. And I'm not going to say you're, you're wrong because you adopted from a breeder. But what I'm going to say is I wish you wouldn't, I wish they wouldn't promote breeding. Like, glorify it. Um, Helena says, I got Lou and Cedric recently as recommendations. They're cute, but not real. They remind me of family channels. And that is what they are, in a way. Uh, their audience is very young. And, you know, they're populous kind of audience. I feel, Polydog says, I feel like some Chihuahua breeders are breeding the snouts too short. Yeah, oh, man, uh. Oh. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting baited. I'm getting baited. <laughs> uh, Chihuahua breeding in general, they keep trying to go smaller. Uh, and most of them try for apple heads. There, there seems to not be like, no one wants a deer head, which how would you not? This is beautiful. He's a beautiful animal. Well, well, you don't need deer heads. <laughs> Uh, oh, you know the other thing? The other thing that bothers me about Lou the Chi, and this is nothing to do with dogs, nothing to do with YouTube, in a way, but the, the thing that they got popular on is Lou the Chi's voice. The, the weird, like, sounds Mexican voice. Um, those, those videos with Lou the Chi's voice, uh, that's not original. It's just all completely stolen. Like, the, they take the, and, you know, they, they admit it openly. Uh, but all the ones where it's like, you hear Lou the Cheese voice, it's taken from a creator called Lorena Pages. She does these skits, these cockroach, like, she has a cockroach, and they do the skits. Let's Lou, Lou the Cheese voice is the cockroach. <laughs> they basically just take the audio from those videos and then make it like Lou the Cheese. Um, next, Poly, Polydog, you're giving me all kinds of topics today. All the good controversial stuff. Nikki the Chihuahua. Uh, if you don't know who Nikki the Chihuahua is... Wait, sorry here, I'll wrote... Didn't they steal the voice for Lou? Yep. That's... They, they were not really stolen, but, you know, if you've ever watched TikTok, you've seen how everything is just copied. Everything is copied. That's what, that's what Lou the Chi is. Just copied from their cockroach skip skit. Uh, Nikki, the, the, what's the guy's name? Mr. Eviator or whatever. For those of you who are not in the know about this guy, man... Talk about it. I if I could do an MMA match with this guy, I would. <laughs> I hope somebody takes a clip of that and sends it to him too. Um, Nikki Chihuahua, he that's the he's uh, so his dog is the white Chihuahua, that is always angry, and it bites his face and stuff like that. <sighs> the thing is, the dog is it's not angry. That dog is an anxious mess because, frankly, and if we can go, if we can use naughty language for just a moment, because he's fucking with it. He's doing something to that dog to make it do what, it, to make it anxious so that it gets angry and it bites. It bites him or it growls. Um, you've never, I could, I could live stream for 50 hours straight and do everything, mess with Porter and stuff like that, you would never see Porter growl at me or bite me. It, it's clear that this person is abusing his dog and he's posting it on the internet and people love it. That's the sick part. People love it. And why, I, why they do, why they don't seem to understand that this dog is clearly being harassed. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but 
it, that's what's happening. I think maybe a lot of it is that pe- there are a lot of people who hate chihuahuas, so maybe they just like to see a chihuahua get harassed and abused, basically. Um, yeah. Uh, if you aren't aware of that whole Nikki thing, there are others, too. There are other uh, chihuahua channels where they harass dogs. Um, man, that just boils my blood. Especially after, you know, after being with Porter and after getting Porter through what he got through. (laughs) It's also absolutely infuriating how people will call you a Karen and snowflake if you explain to them that it's abuse. Physical abuse isn't the only type of abuse. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and Mighty Mina, that, you have that, so, you have, oh, man. So Mighty Mina said, it's because it's been normalized that chihuahuas are demons, and they're aggressive, is normal. And here's here's the very interesting thing about that. Uh, breed stereotypes on the internet, they create certain, they create certain trends. So... Uh, on chihuahuas, for example. Uh, the joke is, chihuahuas are basically aggress- the most aggressive thing ever. Whatever. And uh, when I, you know, there's a meme. It's like, uh, it says something like, <laughs> uh, I forget how the meme goes. Whatever, it's it's a just aggressive chihuahua meme. And on the other hand, let's take pit bulls who, by the way, are naturally more aggressive than a chihuahua, frankly. Um, But when you go on the internet, there is something that happens. There, because pit bulls are, like, attacked by certain groups uh, as being aggressive, there is a huge counterculture to... um, to that kind of thing with pit bulls. So on the internet, if you have a friendly pit bull, a friendly pit bull is a popular thing. Whereas a friendly chihuahua isn't necessarily as big of a deal. But if you posted an, uh, an aggressive pit bull on the internet, you would get harassed like crazy. You would get swarmed. You would get spam reported like you know, he'd get canceled, basically, if you posted an aggressive pit bull. He posted an aggressive chihuahua. Oh, ha, 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 this is funny. You know, like... <laughs> because a huge counterculture has has sprung up around it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> whoever... I don't know who... Polydog, I, this person in the chat, Polydog. They're, they're good. They're good at the topics here. You got you <laughs> You're getting me going. These are all my, these are all topics I am very, very into, very passionate about. Look at this right here. <laughs> um, Skipper says, you have to be bigger than the cheese attitude in a good way. My grandfather always had a cheese and I had no problem with them. They're dog, you know, they're dogs. Um, that's not to say all dogs are just dogs, but uh, chihuahuas are nervous by nature, and they can be insecure. The thing about them is that they need very consistent training. They need very consistent love. They have to know that someone cares about them. Otherwise, they'll be angry. They're, you know, they'll be, uh, not angry, they'll be anxious and they will they will do things like bite or bark all the time stuff like that oh pod tracy says i have been accused of being a karen so i'm <laughs> i'm a karen and proud of it pitbulls are wonderful it's humans who abuse them that suck <laughs> oh pitbulls 
I I will refrain from that topic for the moment because that's too much of a rabbit hole for me. Uh, I don't think we should destroy all pit bulls or anything like that, but I do actually... I think the current culture around pit bulls... This, by the way, look at Charlie. The current culture around pit, pit bulls is extremely toxic. And by that, I mean... There are too many people going around saying pit bulls are wonderful and you know it's all it, everything's fine, and then you have all of these, uh, frankly, people who shouldn't own pit bulls who own pit bulls, <laughs> and by that I mean people who are not uh, they're not a veteran. Let's just say. Um, Dog train, you know, they don't know how to really train dogs, or they're not physically strong. Um, I've seen some real craziness with pit bulls, so I, I truly believe. And of course, you could, everyone can give me a million examples of nice pit bulls, but I do think that pit bull owners should, if if there was some way to do this, uh, I, I wish we could only have experienced owners having pit bulls because they are not something that beginners should have. And the pit bull community, uh, very irresponsibly, makes it seem like <laughs> that's true. Like you can't, like anyone can own a pit bull. Again, it's not that I hate all pit bulls. We know a pit bull who's the sweetest dog. Uh, but they can be very dangerous. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Now, this is my longest live stream ever, by the way. <laughs> so thank you to everyone for giving me lots of good uh, stuff to talk about. You got me going. You've got me going. <laughs> uh, let's see. Chihuahua Dog Life says, I love Porter and Polly because Andy shows the loving nature of Chihuahuas. I'd never show my dogs in a negative light, they are wonderful family members. And, yeah, that's what I love, you know. I If you show your dogs, just don't show them. Don't harass them. Don't be mean to them. There's some real sweet stuff going on here. Uh, one of my teenage sons moves too fast and annoys the little dogs, so one of them refuses to do anything but bark at him. He wants to connect to her but unknowingly feeds her fears. Yeah, and, yeah, that's frustrating. That's a frustrating situation. So many, <laughs> so many situations are all about, you know, teaching the human as much as teaching the dog. Oh, my mouth is dry. All dogs are wonderful. I understand exactly what you say. Just as sad. I love German Shepherds. I say you must know your breed to take the best care of them. Yes, and German Shepherds are another one. I I honestly think that <laughs> beginners should not be allowed to uh, to adopt German Shepherds because German. I mean, you know, I I'm a big German Shepherd guy, but they're a dog. Things can go wrong with <laughs> if you do not know what you're doing. Uh, is that Charlie Cat? How is he doing, Charlie Cat? This is him. He's doing well. Uh, he's seizure-free over a month now. So, yeah, thankfully. Because we went on a pretty bad run of seizures for a while there. <laughs> uh, I rescued a pity once who actually had barbed wire embedded in his head. I went in the mid- Wow, hold on. Oop, this is scrolling me down. I went in the middle of the night and stole him from his abusers. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hijack your story on that one, but I actually worked with a guy at one point in my life who he was, this guy neglected his pit bull really badly. And we all knew it and we all like shamed him. And he would literally just leave it outside all day. Someone came and stole it from him. Everybody at work was happy about that one. <laughs> Did we lose Porter? Porter? Well, we mean Porter? Where'd you go, Porter? 
Porter. <laughs> Wait, I'm under my blankets. Well, Porter, we won't see a pretty face, Porter. Well, well, come on, Dan. I'm on my blanks right now. <laughs> oh, Porter. Oh, now he's hitting me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I suppose we're we're an hour and a half in. It's probably a good time to wrap everything up here. Uh, yeah, my mouth's super dry too. I need to go drink some water. But hey, uh, thanks. You know, I I like to, um, you know, my streams usually are, are just I like to just talk to you guys. So I love when we can actually just sit and chat. Um. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, between Svetlana and me being sick, I have been posting a lot less. So sorry about that. And uh, I hope, you know, things can start improving on that front. Because I've been pretty down. Oh, Poldo. Ellen, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> adopting this. <laughs> I agree. And that's a whole... That's something I always get really angry about. Whenever someone... Whenever someone adopts from a breeder and then I find out that they have like 10 chihuahuas at shelters near them, I'm like, what? Mm. <laughs> My phone's out, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so thank you all for watching. Um, uh, yeah, glad we all got to hang out and talk today. <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll do another one of these some, at, at some point. Take care, everyone. Well, bye, y'all. I hope, I hope that y'all come back. And we'll, uh, well, you can sing some Sweet Home Alabama with me. Sweet Home Alabama. My dad's not good at singing. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, you're a good dog. You're a good dog, Portal. <laughs> bye, me. Me says, bye, everybody. <laughs> Forty dogs. Body dogs says goodbye. You should, you should send some squirrels to body dogs. Body dogs. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Oh, Charlie, I suppose. Charlie loves you. Charlie loves you. Charlie, we love you, Charlie.